set closes for split car locks on each end, it's not risky. Daddy! Daddy! The ghost collapsed. What? The ghost collapsed outside. Oh no. Can you help me? Better fix it. Can you help me? Look at me. <laughs> Welcome back to the High Road Brewery where I'm actually doing a split batch and it's a lager. It's a dry hop lager. And so I've taken my Nelson, my dry hop Nelson lager and I've tried to do one with Nelson but this time with a little bit of Galaxy and then I also did another one with just Simcoe as the dry hop. So the, the, the whole idea is I do a 46 litre batch I then split, the, split it in half I put... 23 litres in the anvil bucket and then I put 23 litres in the SS Brutech Chronicle and then yeah so it was a kind of was it an 8.3 kilos of Bohemian Pilsner and a kilo of Munich 1 that went into the grist and then I had 58 grams of Saz in 60 minutes 70 grams of Saz at 10 minutes and then 90 grams of size at flame out. And then the Nelson one got 40 grams of Nelson and 10 grams of Galaxy. Or was it? No, sorry. It was 30 grams of Nelson. This thing's wrong. It was 30 grams of Nelson, 10 grams of Galaxy to make 40 grams. And the Simcoe one got 40 grams of Simcoe as a dry hop. So they're all the dry hop amounts. And yeah, it was all the I think it's the hills it was cross mill of hills it was fermented with which seems really nice and so I end up with two beers which I've got here which are let's see if we can hide my face and get some so as you would expect unless something had went wrong with the fermentation they're both pretty much the same colour if I clear, get rid of some of that haze. Let's see. Come on, you. Come in. Come in. Focus. Right. It's, I mean, there's a slight haze to it. And, yeah, nice carbonation streaming up. I think I've mixed them up now, so I don't even know which one's which. Yeah, I now know. That's interesting, right? Okay. So the beers are... It's... The whole flavour... Is totally different. The aroma. That's weird. Right, okay, I think that's the Simco one. I have no idea. <laughs> Oh dear, this is a good start, isn't it? I think the Simcoe one's the one with more aroma, or it did at the start just there, but then... K 
because you would expect the Nelson ones get that sort of gooseberry wine, and it's quite a the the, the Galaxy brings brings that kind of peppery bitterness a wee bit. Right. And what's this one? Because they both get. See, I did prefer one over the other. I used to prefer the Nelson one. But then as it's aged more, the Simcoe one got a lot better. I think the Simcoe one was just a, if no, I'm never going to brew that again because it just, the Simcoe didn't suit. But I think as a, as a layering hop, Simcoe would be really good. If you could even like some citra or something like that in with it. But then what's happened is, I've done this one and I've reduced the amount of Nelson, I think it says 30 grams of Nelson and 10 of Galaxy. When I first did a Nelson beer, I had 50 grams of Nelson. I thought it was maybe too much Nelson. But going from 50 down to 30, it's just too much. It's actually, it definitely needs to go up. And it was much better as a 50 gram. I think it's lost a lot of, as it's aged. Now, I brewed this one ages ago. When did I brew this? Basically got a note of every brew I've ever done. But this split batch was done back in February and we're now in September. So, pff, long time ago. And so I think a lot of the aroma has gone. Now, is this the Nelson? No, because it's too... I think that's the Simcoe because it's got tangerine. See, this one's quite low in aroma. It's just slight fruits, but see, see when it was younger, it was a lot, it was a lot more punchy. Which serves me right. I should actually be. I think I'm making too many beers. To be fair, like eight kegs is just too much to try and get through for me. Because I'll do most of my drinking on a Friday and a Saturday. And then I won't. These days, anyway, I don't drink uh, as much during after that those kind of periods. Because it, it used to be it was like uh, a dry day. When 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 did I actually have, you know, when did I, I not drink? It was easier to track. But I'm trying to calm all that down because it just gets too much. They, they are quite, obviously they're going to be quite similar because everything else is the same. Yeah, that'll be the Simcoe one. Which is, now that it's all, it's calmed down, is it, it's a nice kind of tangerine thing that's going on. But... It's not like it's pure, oh wow, that's that's super amazing and all that. It's a bit Simcoe's a bit it's a bit one dimensional because it's only got that one dry hop. I'd rather layer that. Now would I rather layer Nelson and Galaxy? It it is the, I think it is the better beer. But then the question is how would they be if we mix the two together? Let's put a bit more of this and then we'll blend it. See, that's, that smells better already. I think that it's just the Simcoe's held up a bit better over the time. Whereas the the Nelson and Galaxy, I think, because it's such a little hop, dry hop, 40 grams. There's 40 grams on it, but Simcoe seems to be a bit, a bit more punching. But, 
banging. I think it's just bringing a bit more complexity into it. Having those three, or the, the different, just layering the hops, just seems a much more interesting beer than just straight out simple. The, the, the Nelson Galaxy one seems to be pretty good. But as I say, it's lost its aroma now. It was really good at the start. So, I think more Nelson, definite. Uh, in a beer or in the lager because I mean 50 grams is probably where it should have been and it, it was a really good beer and I was thinking oh maybe I'll just tone it down a little bit but nah yeah that's good that's good good as a blend so what have I learnt well I've learnt how to taste Simcoe that's for a kicker what that brings, it and it's a kind of, it's almost like a, it is a very kind of high note, kind of tangerine thing that it brings, but of, is its main sort of key, I think. Uh, so if I wanted to bring a bit more tangerine into some, I would definitely look at Simcoe. The other ones I know that does the exact same is Amarillo, but Amarillo tends to bring with it a bit of pine. So, Without looking at using a bit of pine, then Simcoe could be a good, a good one. But I think the way I have been using Simcoe in the past has definitely been an advantage of blending it. And so a lot of the beers I have liked, I've been like, oh, I really love that that tangerine note sort of thing. And it's probably been the Simcoe that's bringing it. Not that I'm thinking, you know, not knowing what it was. So yeah, and. It, I think if you, you start to push it a bit more, you'll be starting to get a bit more tropical fruit out of it as well. But yeah, it's good. It's quite good actually to do the split batch. And just, um, it gives you the option to just change things up a wee bit. And try some different yeasts or... Um, different dry hops as well just to give you the, the thing it's interesting how little of the size you taste I mean if I hadn't put any dry hop in there that would be really spicy but just with a bit of that sort of you know new world hops it just seems to be it just dominates over the size but I think Saz does play really well to these kind of hops so having size as a kettle addition is probably quite a good idea it does play really really well so that's a benefit but yeah I think this is when I did my first I think I used this to do or did I? No, I wouldn't. I was thinking I'd used it as my first tester on the the new system, the new fermentation system, but I didn't. I actually used an inkbird uh, separately on the anvil. So the anvil bucket, this was the anvil getting decommissioned. And what I did was basically put a heater pad into the base, one of the kind of blue ones you can get off Amazon, 240 volt. And then I got a pond pump get these 240 volt pond pumps and you just it's basically got AC just put it in the glycol and it'll push out uh, glycol into your chilling coil and then wire it back into the return in the, the glycol and it's quite a cheap way actually that system so you could actually just pick up uh, one of the you know the, the kind of remote bar chillers or something or you could just get an ice box or something and then have it hooked up to your, your ink bird and that's you got your cooling. So yeah, it's a it's a good little option. And just gave me the a different way of, of uh, doing that anvil and adding into the bringing that back into commission because it's not really been used much apart I think last time before that was for doing some ciders and stuff like that. It was a kind of side uh, fermenter for that so I gave it a good clean and all that sort of thing and used I think I used VWP to give it a good blitz and then sodium percarbonate and then a star sand or chem sand now is what I use 
yeah. I've got the big, got a big bottle, and then I just refill, refill the the one that you squish with the measurements that are never accurate. Supposedly, we find we found out in the podcast, so but I don't care as long as it's roughly there or about, and we're getting uh, the right dilution mix in in the ballpark, then uh, it will still be non rinse or no rinse, still be yeah. Anyway, I'm rattling on. All right, guys. We interesting one. I think for me mostly it was about starting to understand the different hop flavors. So I definitely recommend that for yourselves. If you have a favorite hop or you know there's a hop out there that you don't really fully understand, is maybe just try something that I've done is just have it as a kind of standoff one dry hop type thing and see what that's bringing. Especially with something noble that says that'll pro- pretty much bring a spiciness in a sense but the no the 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 dry hop like citra or simcoe or whatever will probably pretty much um edge that out so it gives a nice bitterness but then just the 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 high notes of all the your smell and just the dry hop just brings so much flavor as well i mean the traditional thought of you know the start of the boil is for your bittering and then your middles for your your flavour or whatever and the finals like more aroma sort of thing is just nonsense it's it comes from everywhere dry hop it just brings so much more to it as well so yeah interesting get a go yourself and i'll catch you later all right guys thanks for watching and make sure you drop us a wee sub and a like if you like the video and drop in any comments on hops you've done and the key flavour or aroma that you get from it. Alright. Cheers. Right, I'll catch you later. Bye.